Bordeaux is widely considered the center of the wine world, conveniently located on the Garonne River in the southwest of France. This historic city has been producing fine wines for centuries. In fact, one of the great gastronomes of America, Thomas Jefferson, fell in love with the great vintages of Barton and Gastier. In this episode, we will visit the home of this historic wine merchant and cook up a wine tasting menu with Chef Frederick. Thomas Jefferson fell in love with this great city and I'm sure I will too for a taste of history. A taste of history is made possible by Sandals Resorts, the luxury included vacation where love is all you need. Located nearly 400 miles from France's capital city of Paris, the historic city of Bordeaux lies on the banks of the Garonne River. This convenient location along the water has allowed it to be a vital city for commerce dating back thousands of years. The climate in the southwest of France has also made Bordeaux an ideal region for producing wine. In the 18th century, uh, a lot of the wines are also coming from other places in the southwest of France. But because Bordeaux was the big harbor, all wines would transit by Bordeaux. In 1725, an Irishman named Thomas Barton settled in the fertile Bordeaux region of France to set up his wine business. Thomas Barton was famous because he was the first one to understand that wines had to be filtered and stabilized before being shipped. The wines would be both already vinified. I mean, the alcoholic fermentation was done. And depending on who was the negociant buying, the taste would be different because the fining and the filtering was different. In 1802, Thomas Barton's grandson, Hugh Barton, partnered with Frenchman Daniel Gustier and started a legacy that would last for centuries. Daniel Gustier set up an import company in Baltimore and he was importing food. He was importing guns to help the Americans getting independent from the English and also wines and wines that the Bartons were producing. One of the first customers we had in the US was Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson came to France as an ambassador and he started to go around the vineyards, he started to visit west of Europe, and he became a wine lover. Upon his return home to America, Jefferson stocked his cellar with select vintages from Barton and Gastier. During his term as the third U.S. president, Jefferson would often write letters requesting these wines. He amassed such an extensive collection that when trade with Europe was suspended due to the Embargo Act of 1807, he was still able to enjoy his lasting reserve of favorites. Today, B&G is the oldest wine house in operation, and their team of winemakers have been continuing the traditions of their founders at their historic headquarters, Chateau Magnol. You see me travel the world over and visit markets everywhere. It's because I can feel the pulse of the region in their gastronomic offerings. Walter, I'm very pleased to show you around here today in the Marché des Capucins, which is located really in the center of Bordeaux. You have the list yep, for chef, some ingredients? Chef gave me the list. Let's go then. Ma liste qui est 10 pommes rouges, plutôt Pink Lady si vous avez. Voilà, 10 s'il vous plaît. The Rocher, that doesn't exist by us in okay. the States, it's not oh common. The Rocher, the small mackerel, difficult here. How close are we to the ocean? Right we are about 30 minutes, 30 half minutes. an hour away. And therefore you have fantastic seafood all along. Mm -hmm. That's right. So let's take some, s'il vous plaît. C'est parfait. We the Magre de Canard. The Magre de Canard, which means a duck breast in English, yes. which is the main course for our menu degustation. Yes. It's going to be great. Yes. Look, we here have we some here. Beautiful. 
We found the coquillon yes. shark. We call them scallops. Scallops Obviously, in English. Where we come from. The scallops are here with a roll that you normally don't see, and it's uh, normally in a shell, you know, the scallop yeah. shell. Yeah. Here, building petit chenet, extraordinaire. With bread, you know, yeah, with well. baguette. What else do we need? You like oysters? Oh, big oysters. time. Mm. You can feel the ocean. Yeah. What a great shopping trip. Yeah. All shopping trips should be like that, Solange. So we and say santé? Santé, and we have to go back to the chateau. Yeah, we, we have, have a lot, lot of to prep do. to do. It's a spectacular moment. I'm here with Chef Frederick and we were preparing a tasting menu that takes the great vintages of Bordeaux to get me the great food that Chef Frederick is going to show me. En premier plat, on va faire un toast à la tapenade et au filet de rouget. So for the first course, we make an écouton with the local redfish, rouget. We already descaled it. What he's doing now is filleting it. It's a very beautiful little appetizer. This particular fish takes a little bit of skill because on the inside it has bones. So you have to cut it open like he's doing to remove the bone. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. And you put them on a baking sheet and you brush a little bit of olive oil over it. This particular fish, because it's very flat, Chef explains, it takes only like two minutes in the oven. Là, il faut teinter le... La texture du poisson doit être un peu encore molle. You want to make sure that when you touch the fish, you can feel it bouncing back a little bit. That means you want to slightly undercook it to maintain the moisture. And the toast, he just puts a little bit of garlic over. And now the tapenade, you can make with green or black olives either way. A little bit of vinegar, oh, olive oh. oil, anchovy, capers, and a little bit of garlic. garlic. Many tapenades get made with cheese. He prefers almond powder, so it's almond powder in there. It's a very easy in the kitchen machine at home. Throw it all in and, and blend it. Et maintenant, on va rajouter le poisson dessus. Et voilà. If we serve it as an appetizer, he serves three. This is a simple, easy dish, but Chef Frederick has worked many hours on perfecting the flavors of this particular appetizer to go with some of the great vintages of Bordeaux. An additional bonus I'm getting today, not only I'm here in this gorgeous chateau, we're able to cook up this dish with Chef Frederick, mm -hmm. but I have you here, Solange, who is mm -hmm. such an expert, because I always want to find out how properly to taste the wine. Yes, Walter. We will talk about the wine, Barton and Gestier Côte de Provence, which is a rosé wine to match the Rouget. It's a very fruity wine. It's a very accessible wine, crisp, fresh, lively. When you taste the wine, you have to pay attention to each stage, I would say, of the tasting. And the first stage is the color. The color of the wine will give you lots of information about the origin and also on the vintage. For example, this is a rosé, but if you have a white wine which is very light in the color, it means that the wine is quite young. It's totally the opposite for a red wine. Rosé from Côte de Provence are usually, you know, very light in the color. Very nice, very bright. Then you smell the wine. This is what we call the first nose, le premier nez, as we say in French. And when you smell it, you right away pick the fruitiness. It's very, very nice. And the second nose is when you turn the wine into the glass. And doing this way, you will get, when you smell again, more intensity. Mm -hmm more fruitiness, maybe a little bit of spiciness yep. too. You have a little bit of the peppery note. The, the wine seems to be opening up. Yeah, Beautiful. absolutely. The service temperature is very, very important because if you pour a wine which is too cold, what you will push in a way is the acidity. If you have a wine which is too high in the temperature, what you will push 
is the alcohol, which is not very good either. So to have a good temperature is very, very important. Now you taste, Walter. When you taste the wine, what you feel at first is the alcohol, so the sweetness. And you feel it usually on the tip of your tongue. Then comes the evolution, so the way the wine will develop, I would say, on the middle palate. Then comes the aftertaste. Sometimes uh, wines can be bitter, that's an aftertaste. You know, you feel it on the back of your tongue. And finally the finish, that's the length of the wine. And the longer the finish is, the better it is, because it shows that the wine has richness. So the flavor stays with you exactly. longer. Exactly. What is important in wine is the balance between alcohol, acidity, and tannins for, obviously, red wine. So, Solange, let's see how well you pair this. Let's do it, yes. Mm. Oh, spectacular. Perfect. It Finish. just wants to be together. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. It's a great combination. It's a very good balance. The next course for our wine tasting menu, the scallops in phyllo. And the important thing with phyllo, if you want to make it, you got to keep it cold. If it gets warm, it's going to fall apart on you. The second leaf on top. Je remets de l'huile. Mm -hmm. Put a little bit more olive oil on it. The third leaf goes on it. Oil. J'assaisonne. A little bit of salt and pepper. You got beautiful fresh basil leaves he's putting in. He's putting another leaf of the phyllo on top of that. And again, again. a little bit of oil. Voilà, c'est vraiment très très facile. Alors je vais couper la feuille en deux. And now we're starting at the scallops that we picked up in the market. We're just using the muscle itself. We're going to cut it in slices. Et recouvrir la deuxième part. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to now cut it. Six beautiful pieces. Extra virgin olive oil. So now he's just sauteing on both sides for the beautiful color. You see through the uh, phyllo, you can see the markings of the basil that makes it very exciting. So he's going to put it in an oven about 425 degrees for about two minutes. The sauce on the bottom, which is the fish stack, saffron, shallots and cream reduction. It just screams for simplicity and beauty. Everything is so well in harmony. Scallops is something that needs freshness, it needs uh, crispness. And this is the reason why I have selected the uh, Bordeaux Blanc, Barton and Gestier, which is a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Sémillon, which is another grape. Sauvignon Blanc is uh, a grape variety that will give a lot of freshness. It's dominated by citrusy flavors. Mm. You get me so excited, I can't wait. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> it's beautiful. The first nose, really beautiful. Do you get the citrusy yeah, yeah. flavor? Right away. It's what we call a very clean wine all the way, on the nose already, and then on the palate, from the attack to the finish. Oh, yeah. Very nice, huh? Ooh. Refreshing. Completely, all the way through. With these beautiful scallops. Wow. The wine and that. The wine, yeah, like it's it. very good. You did your homework on this one there, I tell you, it's beautiful. Thank you. It's very good with the fish, but it's also the kind of wine that you could have by itself. France is widely known for its diversity in quality wines. Each wine producing region has a unique climate and soil condition, which make up what is known as terroir. To be a Bordeaux wine, you have to come from Bordeaux area. The wine is produced on specific terroir of Bordeaux, quite uh, mild, little rainy. 
Barton and Gaudier's Chateau Magnon lies within the famed Omedoc Appellation, where grape varieties such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Cabernet Franc thrive. Walter, here we are in the vineyards of Chateau Magnol, and you can see that we are just in the pruning process. Which you said is the one most important steps in making wine, right? Yeah, because that's where you manage the quality of the grape to come. So the difference between Haute Medoc and many of the other wine regions is just the characteristic of the soil the grapes get produced. It, it is that, and it's of course the final product, a wine which has character, which is strong, fantastic food wines. The wines I like with my food. <laughs> Once the desired ripeness is reached, the grapes are picked and destemmed. They are then crushed, and both the juice and skins are put into fermentation tanks. During fermentation, yeast will break down the grape sugars into alcohol. Fermenting with the grape skins preserves the iconic red color. The winemaker's skill is to try to remove from the skin of the grape all the components we are looking for in terms of color, in terms of aromas, in terms of tannins. When maceration and fermentation are finished, the winemaker will drain the juice and press the skins. After the vinification process, the wine is very harsh. Usually we put it in casks for maturing. That will help round shape the wines and end up with a very classy and elegant product. When the winemaker decides that the wine has aged to its full potential, it is then carefully blended to achieve a desired taste. So Walter, would you like to, to try? You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> so this is a Cabernet Sauvignon. We keep each varietal separate and after we will make the blending. That's where the, the real magic begins. You have a uh, deep color. You still have a little harshness. Yeah, that's because... The maturing is just under process. And you see uh, the complexity of the nose. Beautiful. Is, is really beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming, Walter. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Chef, what are we making next? Alors maintenant, on va préparer un magret de canard rôti, hamburger aquitain. But the hamburger is actually made with apple. Les pommes, on va pareil les beurrer. Put a little butter on the apple. Then you put a little sesame seed on it. So the apples go in the oven. They take about 15 to 20 minutes at about 375 degrees. And now we get started on the on the duck breast. What he's doing right now, he's trimming down what we call the silver skin, and then he's going to take See. down the uh, excess layer of fat. He's making some diagonal cuts in it. Get a skillet really hot to see off the duck breast. The fat side down, because you want to render the fat out of it. And you're taking the hot duck fat, glazing over the duck breast. Now it's going to go in the oven for about five minutes for air, medium air, maybe eight minutes, around 375 degrees. So the apples look beautiful. That's what I call a faux hamburger bun. Great idea. So you put the, the plant spinach, the onion, cooked with butter, translucent. The foie gras. The foie gras. And now comes the top. Oh yeah, beautiful cook. And a beautiful sauce reduced with wine of the region. It's a very, very, very original dish of Bordeaux. I'm very pleased to introduce you to our beautiful Chateau Magnol. You will see that it matches perfect the complexity, I would say, of the Magret de Canard. The Merlot grape will give a lot of round tannins into it. And Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc will give the, the richness, I would say, and also a good aging potential. Let's try it. Follow your instructions, Alange. Mm -hmm. We have to look. Yeah, so you can see that yep. it's a deep red Beautiful. wine, purple. Nice complexity on the nose, too. Mm -hmm. Black currant, black cherry. Blackberries. Blackberries. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And black pepper, too. It's spicy. It has, has a lot of character. Perfectly balanced, Perfect. again.
The sauce looks beautiful too. Very tasty. A match made in heaven. It doesn't get much better than that. Mm. You know? We have arrived at the finale of our extraordinary tasting menu, or our menu degustation, molded chocolate cake. Alors, dans un premier temps, nous allons beurrer et fariner les, les moules. So the first thing we got to do, we got to prepare our little tarts with butter and flour, so it doesn't stick. Voilà. Nous allons mettre le, le beurre et le chocolat. Butter well, and chocolate is going to warm it up. And now it's going into a water bath to temper the chocolate together with the butter. Maintenant, on va rajouter le sucre. Now comes the sugar. He's going to put in four whole eggs. Voilà. And four yolks. Et pour terminer, la farine. The flour. In the end, in the little shells, it will go to the oven at about 390 degrees. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending. And here we are, we have our molten chocolate cake. Chef Rettig is going to cut right into it. Wow, that looks good. A little chocolate powder and fini. What a beautiful decoration, huh? The gorgeous. You're an artist. Chocolate is quite special, actually, in food and wine pairing. You can very easily pair with a red wine. So this is why I have selected the Barton and Gestier Bordeaux red. About 80-85% of Merlot and 15% uh, of Cabernet Sauvignon. Merlot giving, again, the fruitiness and Cabernet Sauvignon more a little bit of the complexity, the spiciness into it. It's a perfect balance with the chocolate dessert. On verra. On verra. Let's try it. Beautiful color. Purple red. It is gorgeous. First nose. Phew. Fruits? Yes. I get a little cherry, maybe. I was going to say. Yeah, a little cherry. Cherry, yeah. yeah. Let's see what else is Raspberry, there. red Definitely. currant. You get a little bit of oaky flavor because this wine has been aged in oak, not for a very long time, but six months, but it gives a little bit of the toasty flavor. I think you cannot only drink one glass, you have to have at least two. But that's the French paradox. <laughs> Beautiful. And again, and with the wine? Again, in harmony, completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wine really will not good. overwhelm the, oh, yeah. the taste mm -hmm. of the chocolate. It was really a spectacular journey back in time here in your chateau that dates back to the 18th century. It has been a pleasure to welcome you here at Chateau Magnol. So, cheers. Thank you, Solange, to you and your team from Bordeaux for a taste of history. A taste of history is made possible by Sandals Resorts, the luxury included vacation where love is all you need. Cookbooks with recipes from today's program, including A Sweet Taste of History, Chef Stabe's richly illustrated book of early American desserts, and DVDs of the show can be found at atasteofhistory.org.